Generation H is among us, and a lot has changed in the format since we first started. Going towards our first official regional tournament, we have a good sense of what will and won't necessarily be relevant in the upcoming format. So today, I want to try and break down some of these Pokemon for you. There's a handful of picks that, unless you've been really grinding out Regulation H, you probably aren't exactly aware that they're currently dominating in the format or at least the extent of how prevalent these Pokemon are. So today, I want to break down some of the newest threats this format has to offer. This isn't exactly a comprehensive top 10 list, or even like the next 11 to 20 of some sort of top 10. It's just a bunch of Pokemon that I think might be good, and you should keep an eye out for in upcoming events. If you want to see more content like this, of course, make sure to leave a like on today's video and subscribe for more, as I upload a ton of content just like this. I mean, it doesn't hurt to double check if you're subscribed, as less than 10% of you guys actually are. Also, make sure to let me know down below what types of Pokemon you guys are using in Regulation H, and if you want to go the extra mile, even consider hitting the join button. For just a couple dollars a month, it's a great way to support the channel. And with that said, let's get started with some of these first Pokemon. For regulars of the channel, you guys might remember when I talked about how bad a lot of starter Pokemon are in VGC, and how a a lot of them need buffs to even keep up these days. If you aren't in Sonora or Rillaboom, you're probably going to be pretty unviable in most formats, but in Regulation H, however, that's not the case. We actually have three different starters that all fulfill very specific roles on certain teams of checking Pokemon like Dendozo and Tatsukiri, which have become pretty relevant threats. Starting off though with our most noteworthy of the three being Primarina. Now Primarina has honestly just become a top Pokemon in the tier due to the fact that it is probably the best fairy type Pokemon that we have right now by an absolute long shot. In a lot of other formats, you'd probably see Primarina running sets like Choice Specs, Assault Vests, or even Throat Spray. However, in Regulation H, its best moveset features a Citrus Berry with the moves Hyper Voice with the ability Liquid Voice, as well as options like Moon Blast, Haze, and Protect. Now there are definitely other ways to use Primarina, but this is by far the best option as it's able to resist Wave Crash from Dundozo while also having a complete immunity to its Dragon Move Order Up, which would otherwise allow Dundozo to steamroll past opponents due to the Sap Boost it gains. Primarina typically is a great Dundozo check for a lot of these Tailwind archetypes due to the fact that a lot of them really do appreciate the spread water typing, especially with Hyper Voice being such a powerful stab on Primarina. Now Isui Decidueye definitely has a very unique role in the tier as a strong fighting type Pokemon with the ability Scrappy, allowing it an immunity to Incineroar's Intimidate. This means that it checks some of the best picks in the tier, such as Incineroar, Goldengo, Blood Moon, or Saluna, and Arcaladon, to name a very small few, while also providing your team with a very good check to the core Dozer Kiri. Especially considering your move Leaf Blade, it has a high crit ratio, and you can combo this with items like Razor Claw. You can do a lot of damage to Dozer and Tatsugiri, and usually just one shot it if you get that crit, which is definitely in your favor. Now, Miascarada has to compete with a lot of other Dark type Pokemon, such as Incineroar and King Gambit, but it is still a good pick nonetheless, due to the fact that it is one of the fastest Pokemon right now. It also has strong priority with Sucker. Punch, and it has access to the move Knockoff, which is a really good Dark Stab. You'll typically see this running Flower Trick, Knockoff, Protect, and Sucker Punch, though sometimes they'll drop Sucker Punch for Trick Room as a really strong, fast Trick Room setter that could still apply a lot of offensive pressure if Trick Room isn't needed. Now, while these three are the best of the new starters in VGC, there are some other options that are still viable, such as Charizard, Hisui Typhlosion, and Superior, to name a few. Though I don't think a lot of the other picks that are still viable will translate to regional success. Volcarona has two distinct roles that it does provide, the first being a strong Rage Powder user that takes advantage of moves like Struggle Bug and Heat Wave to be very annoying to opponents. With your defensive terrors of Grass or Dragon, you can get a lot of key resistances to Pokemon that might otherwise deal some significant damage, with the big ones being Pokemon like Incineroar with your Dragon typing for Terra and all the opposing water types like Bastia Legion with your Grass Terra. This makes for a very strong partner for Pokemon like Goldengo that would typically be your team's nasty plot spot in that given matchup, but it isn't the only set that Volcarona runs. The main moveset features a Terra Grass or Dragon set that uses Quiver Dance, Heat Wave, Giga Drain, and Protect. While the Struggle Bug variant definitely does favor slightly towards Dragon, this Quiver Dance moveset does feature more so the Terra Grass typing if anything, as it is a great way to boost the damage that Giga Drain would do. You'll typically partner either Volcarona spread with options like Toro's Aqua and Rillaboom, as the Firewater Grass Trio is a very potent option in VGC right now. You can sometimes swap out Rillaboom for Amoongus though, as this does provide the Quiver Dance sets with a nice Spore option that also has Rage Powder, though I personally do still favor Rillaboom a bit as it helps boost Giga Drain damage even further. Now Talonflame has become the best fast Pokemon in the tier due to the fact that its 126 speed is pretty hard to come by. Not only this, but Talonflame also has a very strong offensive priority move thanks to the option of Brave Bird in tandem with Gale Wings. As long as Talonflame is at full health, this priority Brave Bird is a very quick way to deal with most opponents, and it can become very potent with options like Terra Flying and Sharp Beak. Though Talonflame does usually still go with Covert Cloak and a more defensive Terra like Grass or Ghost. While Talonflame can be a good offensive pick with options like Brave Bird and Flare Blitz, it typically is still mostly used due to its supporting move Tailwind, 
which with Gale Wings becomes a strong priority option. You'll typically partner Talonflame with spread Pokemon like Goldango and Primarina due to the fact they can target both Pokemon with one single attack, though frankly, a lot of Pokemon just really appreciate Talonflame due to the fact that it's either a really good grass killer for them, a really good steel killer for them, or just a fast Pokemon overall. I know I've mentioned that Tailwind, Flare Blitz, and Brave Bird are three of the best moves you could run on Talonflame, but that fourth move is really up in the air, as options like Taunt, Will-O-S, Quick Guard, and Protect are all viable options here. Hydreigon does typically go for those scope lens sets that you did see towards the end of Regulation A, as Dragon Meteor and Focus Energy provide a very powerful Dragon Stab that doesn't have to worry about the drops. This also means that your team gets a really good check in Dozo Tatsugiri because you just crit through any sort of boost they would have. In Regulation H, however, we have seen a lot of new items pop up, such as Covert Cloak, Citrus Berry, Life Orb, Assault Vest, and Choice Specs, depending on how you want to use Hydreigon. The best terrors are all still options that are going to resist Fairy, though, and these are options like Steel, Poison, and Fire. With all three happening to benefit really well from the ability Levitate, giving you an immunity to your ground weakness that would otherwise very much harm Hydreigon. Of the three, I personally do think that Fire is the best terror typing here, as it also does boost the stab on Heat Wave, which is a really great option to partner with Draco Meteor, as it pressures any sort of steel types like Goldango and King Gambit that would otherwise be a really good resist to this Dragon Stab. With the 98 speed tier as well, this proves to be a very fast Pokemon in the format, and among Tailwind setters, it's arguably one of the faster ones. King Gambit has a really big benefit of the fact that its ability to fight is really sought after right now, due to the fact that a lot of Intimidate options like Incineroar, Sui Arcanine, Salamence, Gyarados, and many others are all very viable. King Gambit typically does utilize these more defensive Terra such as Fairy and Ghost, though you can lean into Terra Dark sets still to apply some very good offensive pressure. Either way, having a Pokemon that takes advantage of these good Intimidate picks is never a bad thing, and it has a really good positive matchup into picks like Goldango and Basket Legion, both of which really do fear that Dark Stab. Even outside of all of this, King Gambit is still a really good bulky pick that can benefit Trick Room teams a lot just due to the fact that it is a rather slow Pokemon and it even underpaces the likes of Blood Moon or Saluna if you were to get that Trick Room up. Now honestly, I probably slept on Annihilate pretty heavily, since even at the time, I think I in hindsight should have put it at least over Whimsicott in the top 10, but it has proven to be far more consistent than anyone could have ever imagined. Due to the fact that you have a really good matchup into Incineroar as well as Arcaladon, Annihilate has proven to be a very potent option, and it's not a Pokemon you could just easily tear around. Essentially, if you aren't named Furigraph, you're going to definitely struggle to really combat Annihilate properly due to the fact that Rage Fist and Close Combat are two very powerful stabs, as these two are very potent options on Annihilate due to the fact that it is pretty difficult to actually resist this with just one typing alone. Annihilate also benefits greatly from a key partner that happens to also be really viable right now, being none other than Mousehold. While we do have Clefairy as another good friend guard follow me user in the tier right now, I think Mousehold specifically benefits Annihilate significantly more due to the fact there are a lot of mind games when this duo is on the field. For starters, Annihilate and Mousehold both have very unique immunities to each other, with Annihilate being immune to any sort of fighting type attacks that would harm Mousehold, and Mousehold is immune to any sort of ghost type attacks that would harm Annihilate. This becomes even more of a headache since if someone tries to go for a move like Shadow Ball to Annihilate and Mousehold clicks follow me, you're already getting a turn wasted. Though this can go one step further with a Pokemon trying to eliminate Mousehold instead by going for a fighting option and Mousehold instead going for a move like Terra Ghost. This becomes even trickier when you also factor in that Annihilate has options to Terra and a lot of the best Terra options to Annihilate are options that are going to not really care about any sort of fighting type attacks. This would be options like Terra Fire, which allow it to get a nice immunity to burn, or Terra Water, which is just a good defensive typing. Despite typically pairing this Terra Ghost typing on Mousehold with a Safety Goggles, you can sometimes throw the Safety Goggles on Annihilate instead, and go for a Terra typing of Grass to still get a nice Spore and Rage Powder immunity on Mousehold, or even Terra Normal to give Mousehold a lot more of an offensive presence with Population Bomb. However, a lot of Mousehold and Regulation H don't even run Population Bomb, which is the move it was known for at first, since you can instead run B up on Mousehold, allowing you a good way to make Rage Fist and Annihilate that much more powerful. Since you now have a very fast Pokemon that would target Annihilate with beat up, giving you a base 200 power Rage Fist. They can pretty much one shot nearly everything on the field if it isn't resistant. To round out today's video, we have to talk about Psy Spam. Psy Spam has taken over VGC yet again, and it's not just in TD and Armorage anymore, though these two are still the best options. Armourage gained a new toy in the Indigo Disc DLC through the move Meteor Beam, which allows it a great way to combat Pokemon like Incineroar for an immediate one-shot. This power of Meteor Beam set is a lot more potent than the weakness policy ones we saw in earlier regulations because you don't need to take a turn to actually Terra Armourage, as it's now just a good Pokemon even without Terra. This allows Armourage though to become a pretty good offensive powerhouse that really, unless your name is King Gambit, is going to struggle to actually take you out. And even still, King Gambit would most likely need to defensively Terra around you because otherwise it's going to have to fear moves like Heat Wave and 
an armor cannon. It's really difficult to take an attack from Armor Rouge though, since with a plus one expanding force, good luck taking on that Pokemon. Especially when you can still go for options like Terra Psychic, or even a helping hand boost from Ndidi, to make sure that you're really going to take 100% from this attack. Now there are some other expanding force Pokemon now, due to the Indigo Disc making this a TM again, with the first one that's really prevalent right now being Hatterene. Hatterene has a few key benefits, with the first being that it is the second slowest viable Pokemon in the format, only being underpaced by Torkoal. And with Terra Fire, you can get around this issue pretty easily. Not only this, but Hatterene's immunity to Spore due to the ability Magic Bounce is a pretty big deal, because typically Amoongus is one of the best responses to Trick Room teams right now. Finally, Hatterene also could just use its Fairy Stab of Dazzling Gleam to combat any sort of Dark types that would otherwise be completely immune to Expanding Force, making it a very powerful option next to Ndidi. There is one other key Expanding Force Pokemon though, and that's a Sui Braviary, though this one definitely has a bit more issue than the other two. While it is by far the strongest offensively due to the fact that Tinted Lens with Expanding Force is very powerful, because of a Sui Braviary's flying typing, you don't gain the benefit of the 1.5 boost to your Psychic type stabs, you don't gain the benefit of Expanding Force becoming a spread option, and you still really do fear priority moves. So this really does require you to actually go for your Terra Psychic, or it's going to be a very wasted pick. This doesn't make Hisui Bray very bad necessarily, as the damage this thing outputs is incredible. It can even one-shot our Caledon before Terra. But at the same time though, it's definitely a lot more high-risk high reward. Now these teams typically do run one more Psychic time on them that I have not won over yet, but it's not an expanding force user per se, it just happens to be more ran for its fighting typing, being Gallade. Galliot still takes advantage of the terrain very greatly due to the fact that Psycho Cut is a very well benefited move that can target any Pokemon and pretty much one shot it with the sharpness the Psychic Terrain boost. Sacred Sword is still a very good option here as it allows this Pokemon to very easily combat options like Incineroar, especially for Hatterene and Hisui Braviary, while also giving you a great way around Thundozo since even if it does Terra into typing such a steal, you're not really going to kick. Galliot also is just a great support piece, allowing you another option to go for moves like Trick Room and Wide Guard, so it definitely has a lot of benefit outside of its offensive benefits though it's still very powerful nonetheless. These were some of the Pokemon that I think have newly popped up in Regulation H that are all really strong picks to consider. I can see everything mentioned today at least making Day 2 at the next regional, if not making a top cut or even winning it. But let me know down below what Pokemon you guys are expecting to see pop up in Regulation H, and if you enjoyed and want to see more content like this, consider subscribing as I upload new videos like this every week. While you're at it, leave a like on the video, and even consider becoming a channel member, since for just a couple dollars a month, your support goes a long way in helping out with the editors who fund the content on this channel. The first one, of course, is Dose who edited today's video, and the second one is Becca who does all the short form content. Both of their links will also be down below as I love all the work they put forth on the channel, and at the very least if you do too, you can go support their endeavors. With that said, I'll see you guys in the next video, until then, peace out guys.